I think it's a continuation of the tragedy that we've seen uh, in Zimbabwe over the past several decades, unfortunately. Uh, many analysts and observers both outside Zimbabwe and inside the country saw the, uh, the, the election of President uh, Menangagwa as a continuation of the abusive status quo. Uh, and I think that's come to fruition and um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's readily apparent uh, that, that ethical leadership, that democratic accountability is, uh, is needed in the country. And unfortunately, the people of Zimbabwe did not get that uh, in the last election and elections prior to that. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a tough road ahead. For sure. What, what should be done right now in Zimbabwe? You know, I, I think first and foremost, the president um, should end his foreign trip abroad uh, and come back home and deal with this escalating crisis. His deputy, who's been left in charge, is very clearly um, even more hardline uh, than the president and has let the security forces and the military and the police operate with, with brazen impunity, uh, abusing citizens in the streets, killing people in the streets once again, like we saw last August. I think he needs to get home and, and solve this crisis. I think he needs to bring the democratic opposition to the table, um, namely the opposition leader, uh, Nelson Chamisa, others within civil society. I think the religious community has a key role to play um, and, and come to a collective um, uh, solution to this vexing problem that has been there again for, for years. Um, and this, this needs to be solved ASAP. Uh, people continue to be killed uh, for no reason uh, and people are yearning uh, for a better country that, that provides for them, and the people simply aren't getting that. So that frustration, that angst, uh, and that very real possibility for increased, um, more sustained violence will be there uh, until this um, situation is resolved in a peaceful, um, democratic manner. What about SATIC and the AU? What can they do to resolve this kind of a crisis? Again, I think it's, it's, a, it's an issue of leadership and it's an issue of, of political will. Unfortunately, within the African Union, if you look at the current chairperson, uh, President Kagame of Rwanda, there really seems to be no political will to speak out against the atrocities being committed by these incumbent governments, of which, of which the Menangagwa uh, government I is one of them. I think there needs to be real leadership. Uh, unfortunately, in the region, gone are the days of Ian Kama in Botswana or Levi Mwanawasa of Zambia who would actually speak up and speak out and, and try to hold the leaders of Zimbabwe accountable, and that just simply doesn't exist anymore. Um, I think people, uh, leaders in the region, uh, need to take a good, hard look in the mirror um, and um, speak from their hearts on this matter. Uh, I think the time for political correctness and uh, bowing to those who are in power despite the, the, the myriad abuses that have been committed under their command, those times are over. Uh, I think a page needs to be turned and the country and the region is desperately uh, crying out for and, and yearning for, for ethical leadership on this issue and others. From Congo uh, to, 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 to Gabon uh, to Zimbabwe to, you know, th th there's no shortage of countries that um, could, could benefit um, from this new style of leadership that has been missing so far. We have seen that uh, there are two senators, U.S. senators, who have actually spoken about yeah. this issue happening in Zimbabwe. That is uh, Senators Chris Coons and Senator Cory Booker. So what about the Trump administration? It, does it have any kind of say in, in this issue? Uh, so far, I, I haven't seen any official statements um, by, by the administration. Uh, certainly the State Department has been keenly engaged on this, and they're watching the situation closely. Uh, you mentioned Senators Booker and Coons. Uh, who have issued successive statements uh, on the crisis in Zimbabwe going back to last year during the elections. Uh, so I, I think that leadership uh, needs to uh, be sustained, but I also think other voices uh, need, need to step up, as you mentioned, uh, the Trump administration and, and the National Security Council, because I think the, the, the real tragedy of Zimbabwe is not just confined to Zimbabwe itself. It's dragged uh, the, the rest of the region down with it uh, for, for a number of years now. I think. For, for better or for worse, the, the, the democratic fulcrum um, that, that, um, that exists in Southern Africa really rests on Zimbabwe. And I think if, if positive change can happen there, it would have profound ripple effects across the region. Uh, unfortunately, uh, where it stands now, it it's continues to drag the region down in a negative way.